Good morning, everybody. This is a welcome to the ICT Educator webinar series for the fall of 2020. I'm Steve Wright. Uh, I'm the statewide director for the ICT sector team. And on our website, uh, you can see who our 10 regional directors are. Uh, and Charlotte, who's there, is uh, actually helped bring this uh, uh, one today, this, this event today to us. Uh, and Nicole Sherman is the producer of our series. We started the uh, ICT webinar series as an alternative to having conferences, but one conference we like every single year is the ICT Winter Conference. And we're just letting you know, kind of plugging it, because uh, they're, they're pretty good. I know this group today is probably more on the business software side, but uh, if for the, all your ICT or uh, IT friends or whatever, this is a wonderful conference and it's, you can, uh, I think it's right after the first of the, of the year this time. Okay, you can register now for that. Uh, we have on our website, in addition to what you're going to see today, about 35 other webinars, which have all been video recorded, edited, chapterized, transcripted, uh, along with their PowerPoint presentations. So you can use them in your classroom or writing grants or whatever. We've had over 3,500 views to date. So uh, we, we feel pretty good about it. Over the next uh, a couple of weeks, we're going to have, uh, next week is the Google career certificates. Uh, they've got uh, a, quite a portfolio they're developing along with an employer engagement capability that should be interesting to learn about. Uh, after that, we're going to be uh, talking to uh, Corey Athoff, who wrote uh, the self-taught programmer, and he's going to tell us how he's got 100,000 people on Facebook learning how to code. A lot of interesting points on student motivation. Uh, following that, we'll be looking at competency-based education, a, a report that was done by Jobs for the Future for the Chancellor's Office, and it was just released. And so we'll get a, an update on what they think that is and how we can implement that in our community college system. Uh, today, however, we're going to hear about how to bring Microsoft Teams training to your campus. And uh, we know that the world has changed with COVID, and Microsoft Teams seem to be the right enterprise product uh, to, for a lot of companies, and it's a critical thing for people to know. Uh, and we're going to learn a lot about how you can teach that and handle that today. And I want to thank Charlotte for bringing this uh, Carlton card here to do this. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Charlotte and Carlton to uh, present on Microsoft Teams. Well, good morning, everyone. So happy to see you here. And I see we've, uh, we've got a great um, eclectic amount of people from across the state, which is always amazing. You know, as Steve Wright mentioned, um, our business information worker, BIW, is expanding. And we need to think, really, what is industry looking for? What, other than the Microsoft suite, what can we do to help provide introductory or mid-level administrative jobs to our students? And with COVID being here, really, anything that you have as far as technical skills with an a virtual meeting setting or with Microsoft Teams, which provides collaboration, um, security, and just a ecosystem of a platform that works with the Microsoft Office Suite and um, all the other Microsoft tools and, and, and Canvas and so many other things. It's, it's really great to have Carlton here from Microsoft to go over how you could utilize this. And then um, we are also going to provide you some links of great tools where you can go and do some self um, education um, and also bring it to your students. So with that said, I'd like to thank Carlton Card for joining us and welcome him to our meeting. Carlton? Excellent. Thank you, Charlotte. Thank you, Steve. And thank you, everyone, for allowing me to participate in your webinar series. Uh, we're definitely very excited to have this conversation, not just to talk about the teams in general, but really about the aspect of teams um, from a platform standpoint that I think would be very beneficial for your students at the learning level so they could really get a good understanding of how, not just from a collaboration standpoint, but all the other components that, that would be really good for them to be able to learn and um, enter the workforce moving forward through Microsoft Teams. So let's go ahead and just state the obvious when we're talking about Microsoft Teams. It is our fastest growing platform, whether it's from a daily user standpoint of people collaborating with each other and co-authoring, whether it's a meeting platform uh, from live events to Teams meetings or 
those uh, smaller Teams meetings, Teams channel, people are using Microsoft Teams at a growing pace within their organization. And it's not just myself or Microsoft saying that, is the feedback that we're getting from our um, customer surveys and customer feedback uh, highlights those components, whether it is bridging that gap uh, for more effective communication and collaboration in a workspace, whether it is uh, bringing together and breaking down those barriers for working in a team-based environment, or it is empowering uh, everybody on the, on the planet to achieve more by accessing a platform uh, wherever they may physically be located uh, to be able to facilitate that collaboration environment. Teams combines all of those features. But you already know that. I'm, not, I'm preaching to the choir when it comes to what concepts of teams uh, can bring to an organization. What we're really going to focus on today um, is really what teams can provide from an education standpoint and a little bit into the details of how it's really integrated within everything and Microsoft 365. So we could have gone one or two paths. We could have just talked about all of the features of Microsoft Teams from a collaboration standpoint, whether it is how students and faculty and staff can better learn together using team sites and channels, sharing content, OneNote for Classroom, whiteboarding. Uh, we could have done an, an entire session just on the roadmap fe features that are being implemented in Teams. Or we could have gone a completely separate path where we would have discussed the policies related to information barriers, all the really technical things that, from a student perspective, when they're learning to go into the workforce, would be really integral. and landing that specific job so they can know how to be able to manage a platform such as Teams, whether it's called Quality Dashboard, Security and Compliance, the calling features in the Teams. So instead of going one of those paths, we decided to go right down the middle, uh, split, split how Teams would be able to cover everything from architecture at a high level to specific scenarios that you may be familiar with, uh, on their own campus or inside the classroom. Also discuss the security components of teams that are very important if you're trying to enter the workforce and you're wanting to be able to differentiate yourself from a student perspective uh, when understanding how Microsoft Teams works, having that conversation in an organization of how you'd be able to leverage the already components that they've purchased uh, for security and compliance. Uh, and we'll also discuss more about little about Microsoft Teams rooms, devices, and we'll end the conversation when it comes to Power Platform. So one of the things I really like to go, I like to discuss things on a scenario base. So it's not just looking at a bunch of bullets or that kind of conversation. So in this scenario, we're talking about an online program. Here at Contoso College, a com community college, they have several campuses in different locations. Heidi is a professor at Contoso Community College who wants to provide remote classrooms uh, for her online programs. Remote meaning either if there's a policy where a student or faculty member uh, may not physically be allowed to be on campus, whether it's a policy where you have a hybrid scenario where some individuals are al allowed to be on campus and they want to be able to participate in that online program. Or it's a scenario where there may be a student from a different institution and they want to be able to join that online program as a guest. Um, and then lastly, if it's a scenario where um, an individual may not have a specific device, uh, they might need to go to on campus or a designated location for a touchdown room where there's a Surface Hub or a Teams room enabled uh, location where they'd be able to join and participate in that class. Because uh, Heidi decided to leverage a Microsoft Teams, she's able to create that Teams site, use the break, breakout rooms feature, uh, where either on the fly, they'd be able to uh, expand the collaboration of the users in that particular classroom by having each individual uh, work with each other and bring them back into the classroom. 
use that together mode feature where everyone's going to be sitting in the classroom um, instead of having just a video in their specific background and having those Teams channels where they'd be able to either mentor each other or have a direct conversation for office hours directly with Heidi as a professor. And now all the enrolled students were able to engage Heidi specifically as a professor and um, collaborate with each other and learn from each other. This is exactly from a student perspective, how they'd be able to in incorporate that kind of an environment into the workforce because that is how the workforce operates today with a engaged environment in a team environment um, and a collaborative environment, even if some are remote. Here's another scenario where Contosa University wants to announce a, announce a new campus event. So in this campus, we have Franco as the University Dean of Students, and wants to be able to communicate uh, with everyone on campus about a new event that they're going to provide to their students from a work for, workforce development standpoint. Through live events, they're able to um, have a presenter and a producer, and everyone would be able to uh, collaborate with each other and learn what event is going to be occurring for workforce development and their students. And the students are later on aware and there's really good publication about that particular event. These scenarios just really highlight some of the components when it comes to teams at the faculty, student, and uh, classroom level. But here, let's talk about a little bit more into specific detail when we're talking about use case scenarios, whether it is a collaboration in the, in the classroom environment, where from a grading paper standpoint, they're able to facilitate that activity, whether it's a research environment outside of just a normal classroom where they're working with their grad students or their undergraduate students and they're learning how from their professors to, to be able to work better um, and learn uh, as part of a workforce development program. Or for those in the distinct learning scenario where they'd be able to track their engagement and be able to work at and access from anywhere. Similarly, when they're working at Teams, back to the workforce component to how they would be able to transfer what they're doing on your specific college campuses into the, into the workplace. They're able to use Microsoft Teams in order to facilitate that private and group chat and co-authoring announcements, uh, working together from a community aspect and planning those specific events and learning about different job opportunities. And then at your level, the staff level, the fun level, right? We're able to provide all of that task management, that automation on the back end, working either from a student affairs standpoint or an admission standpoint to be able to um, automate a lot of your features when it comes to Microsoft Teams. One of the major things when we discuss with Microsoft Teams, we want to be able to implore from a workforce development standpoint is the benefit of Microsoft Teams isn't just about the chat, isn't just about the meetings itself. It's about the investment from a individual standpoint or an organizational standpoint that you've made can also be incorporated within Microsoft Teams. There's an entire presentation that can be done specifically just on camp Canvas alone. But what we want to be able to highlight, whether it's Canvas, whether from a project management standpoint and you're in incorporating into workforce development and you're talking about Trello or other project management systems, or from our own systems within Microsoft, if you're bringing in uh, Power BI and existing SharePoint site, all of those components can be part of your team's uh, environment and team's features when it comes to working with your students and staff. So what would we recommend just from a scenario and learning about other additional scenarios and other aspects of Microsoft Teams? There's Microsoft Learn site where you'd be able to uh, have your own or for your students from a development standpoint develop those specific skills, as I said before, and I'll go into a little deter, a little more detail when we talk about um, Teams architecture, learn those specific skills when it relates to how do I configure Teams, how to be able to manage it on the back end, how am I able to just facilitate um, a Teams meeting from one colleague to another. Understand and view other scenarios, see how other 
uh, college, community colleges or other individuals have been able to deploy teams. And lastly, post that success as you've learned um, your particular scenario, as you've learned the details, post that specific success through, through LinkedIn and LinkedIn Learning. So we talked about a lot on the front end, what Microsoft Teams provides. I want to talk a little bit more on the back end. And I think this is where, from a workforce development standpoint for students and also from a administrative and management standpoint for the audience on this call, where you'd really be able to leverage what differentiates Microsoft Teams from say other products. Because Microsoft Teams is a part of Office 365, on the back end, it comes with all of that enterprise grade security and compliance and manageability from identity, e-discovery, document storage, mail flow, user group and access management that our customers expect from a team's perspective. It's more than just chat. It's more than just meetings. It's really a hub for teamwork that brings together all of those above features into Microsoft 365. I typically like to add this component whenever we're talking about, about the back end and architecture of Microsoft Teams, just to kind of highlight from an overall platform standpoint, we're really talking about bringing all of those aspects together. And when you're developing a specific workforce into a new work environment from a student perspective, or you're already in the workforce and you're wanting to be able to either manage your environment better or think about that next step of how you'd be able to automate and bring other features in or other investments in that you have existing. Um, this is what we really like to highlight from a platform standpoint is Microsoft Teams bring, brings all those things together. So I know that's a lot of fancy, like, fancy Microsoft marketing speak to be pr completely honest. And I wanna be able to kind of highlight from a real world application what that really means for you from a user standpoint, for your students, and for those that are entering the workforce and how they'd be able to develop those skills, what, what it really means from a Microsoft Teams perspective. Microsoft Teams really brings on the front end all of those components that you see from whether it's bringing in tabs, AI and bots, message extensions. Um, I think I said before about bringing in um, additional investments. On the front end, it combines all of those specific features. On, those back, on the back end, for those that are joining into the specific work, workforce, it also helps develop those skills, whether it's from an Azure and identity management and access management standpoint. It brings in Microsoft Graph API, that's a that all together communication tool, whether we're talking about um, Teams, whether we're talking about SharePoint, whether we're talking about e-discovery, whether we're talking about retention policies, it brings all of that communication together uh, and the documentation storage. And later when we're talking about those power apps, how from a student perspective, they'll learn um, at a low code, no code standpoint, how to be able to create those skills that would be that would be stand out in the workforce and from an administrative standpoint how you'd be able to streamline and concise a lot of your existing processes uh, for better communication through the back end of Microsoft Teams. A few things that we really want to make sure to highlight when it comes to Microsoft Teams again there's the back end there's the front end that we were highlighting earlier but also there's the other components and I'm going to go into kind of a roadmap features as well, but there's also the devices component. If you remember that scenario that I gave earlier when Heidi is a professor and providing that uh, remote experience, how was she able to facilitate having people either join remotely using their own devices or those touchdown features either in a hybrid classroom scenario or an open air scenario where they'd be able to facilitate that social distancing and still be able to participate from a classroom perspective. We're able to facilitate from a devices standpoint through our Teams rooms. What does Teams rooms really mean? That just really means that we're able to uh, facilitate a previous example where we're all in a classroom or all in one specific location and in an auditorium and we're either writing on a, on a uh, whiteboard 
or we are um, breaking out into specific rooms. Teams rooms and Teams devices helps facilitate that familiarity of the classroom or workforce feel. So you'd be able to have a room, if it's your own individual device, as we're on now, or the, that specific touchdown room that's configured for conferencing, or as I said, in that open air setting, uh, where they'd have a Surface Hub, they'd be able to social distance and still be able to participate in those meetings where the camera is following that pre specific presenter, or it's, it's uh, zooming in specifically on someone in that room that is speaking without the need of 30 different devices. So of course, we have a lot of things that are constantly evergreen when it comes to Microsoft Teams and Microsoft 365. For those NBA fans or LA Laker fans that are on the call, you've already seen uh, during the NBA Finals and during the NBA Bubble, uh, one of our major roadmap features that is being deployed or, or for most may, may already be deployed in this together mode, where you have that sit down next, sitting down next to your peer feeling um, instead of just a collection of different boxes. That's very important. I mentioned breakout rooms again. That's something that's coming uh, in November where you'd be able to either on the fly break out um, group members so they could have individual group meetings and bring them in specifically into the meeting, be able to manage that without them having to leave the meeting or access a different link. And, you, and the uh, manager of that particular meeting or classroom will still be able to communicate with everyone in the class. Or they could designate um, individuals to specifically work together. A lot of those are coming up a lot of those features are coming in through together mode. So we're talking everything from uh, large meetings, they'll be able to support uh, 100, uh, 1,000 more, not 100,000, but 1,000. Uh, for larger meetings, obviously, live events would be more facilitating for that. That's being able to um, bring in, like, say, 12,000 people at a particular meeting. That multi-window mode, so when you're in a particular meeting, and you don't want to have to switch back and forth between the view. Um, you'd be able to have multiple windows open so you, so you could more concisely and efficiently work together. So I could still have the view of everybody on a particular call and share content in a, another window where they'd be able to see um, what we're all co-authoring on. And also that dynamic mode. So if I want to be able to have together mode on one side so I could see everybody and also present at the same time and scale uh, depending on need, whether we want to focus on everyone in the classroom or we want to focus on everyone in that particular meeting. As I mentioned before, the major differential between Microsoft Teams and other products is that it's incorporated in all of Microsoft 365 on the back end for security and compliance. So whether it's at the administrative level or at the student level, when they are learning different aspects of identity for access management, for compliance, all of these components are still relevant for them entering the workforce um, through Microsoft Teams. So as I said before, identity and access management, threat protection, that's a major component when it comes to security, uh, information protection and governance policies and group policies, that cloud app security and risk management. All of those components, either at, at the administrative level that you're having to apply now, or from a workforce level that they're maybe learning individually in other specific classrooms, because Microsoft Teams is incorporated in all those components, they would be able to use their and leverage their knowledge of managing Microsoft Teams through the learning sites that we provided before to better incorporate them into the workforce. Now, from a Teams perspective, when we're talking about privacy and control, we're really talking about how you're able to uh, either manage participants so you don't have um, video bombing or you're able to manage uh, specific controls from either managing overall chat or managing from a 
conference line call and masking specific numbers so there's not a lot of PII um, floating during a specific meeting. Also, because Microsoft Teams is a part of a mobile client, uh, a major component that we also want to make sure that your students from a workforce, workforce de development standpoint take advantage of and from an administrative standpoint take advantage of is our enterprise and mobility with Intune when it comes to Microsoft Teams. So whether it is device management, whether it's application management or PC management, uh, Microsoft Intune is a very important component, not just from an administrative standpoint, but also from a work, workforce deployment standpoint. And those students in your programs through learning Microsoft Teams are also learning these components when it comes to overall IT security. Now this is less about students, obviously this is really more about you. So you could just make sure you're aware of like, okay, this sounds all great when it comes to how we'd be able to both empower our students and empower us. But when it comes down to it, you really wanna make sure from a licensing standpoint, you have the correct licenses to be able to facilitate that um, type of security and deployment. So there you have the Microsoft Learn components, but on the administrative end, these are the type of things you really wanna make sure that you have license for, or when those students are coming into the workforce, they wanna be able to ask those questions in a particular meeting. Hey, I know uh, being part of your security profile and being part of your security team is really important, but do you, are you specifically licensed to be able to do the things that you're interviewing me for? That would be a major differentiator for someone going into the workforce when they're um, interviewing um, with a potential uh, customer company. So a little bit about us and your team. Uh, so I am just one individual, a part of the larger team from a Microsoft perspective that at your level would be able to administrate and help facilitate um, teams and collaboration for not just you, but for your students. But it really just starts off making sure you're engaging myself or our Microsoft team. So we could go over your specific scenario and how you want to either deploy um, for yourself or educate your faculty and educate your staff, um, provide that um, value either directly from your staff to your staff or to your students um, when it comes to uh, the overall enablement of Microsoft Teams. And as I mentioned before, whether it's my myself for other members of our team, we provide services to not just an organization, but at the student level as well. So we have um, individuals and programs that will meet with family, we'll meet with uh, faculty and staff, we'll meet with educators, we'll meet with students. So they will know these components that we discuss from a Microsoft Teams perspective. Now, when we're talking about Power Platform, I think this is truly one of the major features in Microsoft 365, where not just from a workforce development standpoint, but also from an organization standpoint, you'd really be able to leverage not just what Teams does, but make that difference, um, whether it is skills that you're learning to join the workforce or the difference of being able to concisely automate a lot of the existing processes that you have. And that's through Power Platform. So, our most known feature would be Power BI. I really like to focus from a Power App standpoint or, or Power Platform standpoint is Power Automate uh, and, and, and Microsoft Flow. What Microsoft Flow really highlights is being able to take all of those investments, whether it's from an Office 365 standpoint or your existing standpoint. So say, for example, you have an admission process, which I'm sure you do, where you're having to send emails back and forth. You may have DocuSign, the student signs something, uh, the parent signs something, the dean signs something. Everybody has to look at something and you're going back and forth and you forget it's Thursday and you just drop the kids off um, uh, over with your, um, uh, your cousins or your parents so they can play with your grandparents. And you didn't have any time to look at a specific SharePoint site. And like, I don't have time to, to look at that SharePoint site. I completely forgot all about it. Well, what Power Automate and Flow is really about is 
incorporating all of those notification components, the approval components, all of those existing investments. So if you didn't specifically go to that SharePoint site and, and uh, download that file for approval so everyone know that yes, um, Hector will be able to join your particular community college for the spring semester. You will see that when a file for approval gets put into a SharePoint site, it gets a notification from everyone in a particular Teams channel, and that Teams channel notification goes to a specific approver without having to go to that SharePoint site. They just open up the email. They're like, hey, this document's ready to approve. They select a button. Um, they're able to either approve or reject because uh, there's notes uh, within that message for them to know more about what's going on in that file and feedback that they've had from other people. They select uh, approve on the Teams channel. Everyone gets that notification that that uh, information has been approved. And Hector has been able to successfully enroll into your spring semester at your community college, all without having to go back and forth and find that particular file or, or any other kind of notification or Steve is asking Dennis, hey, Dennis, I don't remember that specific SharePoint site where you put that file. Do you remember? Because we have 60 SharePoint sites and I can't remember at the, that particular time. I just dropped off my kids at their grandparents and I really wanted to be able to work that out. Steve won't have to ask Dennis. He just go to his email and he sees it right there and all he does is press approve. That's one of the major things we really like highlighting when it comes to um, the Power Platform is not just from an administrative standpoint, but also from a student standpoint, they'd be able to benefit from an improved process and automation through our Power Platform. So with that, I know there was a lot of words and a lot of information um, and a lot of time that you dedicated listening to me. Uh, but I would really be interested in your feedback and any kind of questions or any kind of um, other items that you would like some additional information on. Um, really want to open it up to everybody on the call so we could um, uh, have that and facilitate that conversation. Well, well thank you, Carlton. That was very informative. I, I, I'm going to go ahead and start uh, by asking the stupid question, uh, and, and that is, how do you learn all that stuff? I mean, I'm overwhelmed. Uh, <laughs> and, 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 you know, I, I'm thinking, I mean, one thing you, you kind of created the idea here that if you have this implemented in your school and the students are participating in the classroom with this technology, that's one kind of facilitating, accelerating way for them to get to know it. I get that, but that's not always going to be the case. And I, I know, I'm sure, pretty sure there's probably some stackable certifications that you offer, but uh, quite frankly, how, how do you advise people learn this? Well, that's, uh, if, if you, uh, I'll um, see if I could share my screen again and go back. Um, the main point, and thank you, Charlotte, for putting that, Microsoft Learn would be the first starting point where you'd be able to learn at your own pace all the components, and not just from the front end, if you remember that particular diagram, how you'd be able to manage um, specific meetings, um, managing chat, managing who you want to add, admit into a particular meeting from a team's perspective, but all those back-end features that I highlighted, whether it's LinkedIn Learn or Microsoft Learn, that's where I would start as an overall starting point. So I can learn at my own pace, whether I'm already in the workforce or about to join a workforce, I use that feature. So it's not like a feature that we're saying to people external to Microsoft, hey, use this specific link, but we have our own secret sauce that we don't really tell you about. I use Microsoft Learn too, um, to be able to have these type of conversations and understand the different scenarios and different uh, working components um, that Microsoft Teams and Microsoft 365 brings to our customers. Well then, uh, let me turn it on Nancy then. Uh, because Nancy, how do, how do you teach your students Microsoft Teams or similar type products? Well, we haven't used Microsoft Teams. That's why I'm on the call. I mean, it's available and we, in, my IT people have encouraged us and we have a collaboration among staff in my unit um, where we share files and that's basically it. So we have not employed it to its fullest extent. And so what's 
I'm finding interesting with all of the presentation is it seems to be that the IT has to employ it before we can even access some of these things. Um, so I need to be talking to my technology services. Yeah. And, I, and I also need to somehow bring this into the classroom because in my procedures class, I'm trying to expose them to all the software that's out there that would be productive in the office. And I have not employed anything in Teams yet. So we are, um, CBEA has a call uh, called First Thursdays. We're doing a presentation on November 19th, I think, um, also on Teams. So it'll be interesting to see the perspective, but I think that's more of a hands-on um, rather than the, the back-end side for deployment. And, and also keep in mind, as I mentioned before, we have staff to help assist you um, from an education standpoint and from also from a student standpoint in learning Microsoft Teams. So we have our, uh, what we colloquially still call our retail stores. While they're not physically there, those individuals are still part of Microsoft that directly go to educators, go to staff, go to students in helping them teach in their own language um, uh, what Microsoft Teams means to them. So it's not just me providing this specific uh, presentation. It's someone from our uh, retail stores uh, providing Microsoft Teams education based on your particular scenario, um, whether it's, as I said, on the front end um, or how you'd be able to take that next step on the back end. Um, a lot of the features that I showed on the back end are some are IT centric, but a lot of them, to be perfectly honest with you, or more about how you'd be able to still manage those components on the front end. So whether it is the all mute component that's coming through or the breakout rooms component that's coming in November, whether it's dynamic mode, whether it's making sure um, you're bringing in the correct uh, people that you want to participate either in a specific individual channel or an entire team site, uh, or the power automate feature. Uh, really power automate is just a license. So from an IT perspective, the question really is, hey, do we have this Power Automate already and Power BI already licensed for us? And it's just either, yes, we do, or you know what, we really should get that. And then they provide it to you and you're able to run on your own. Um, the great thing about Power Automate, as I said, it's low code, no code. Uh, so I'm not a great PowerShell or C Sharp or JSON programmer. But because Power Automate makes me, you know, look fancy um, and all those specific scenarios, I love using it all the time. So I'd like to ask Alan Foote to give an example of how he uses Microsoft Teams with his students. Hang on just a minute. All right. Um, I use Microsoft Teams every day in for my classes. And uh, can I actually show my teams today? Can I uh, actually take over? If I have done this correctly, I think you are looking at my, one of my classes, this is my team site. And I guess the first comment I'm gonna make is that my class is a team, all right? Every student in my class is part of my team. All right, and what I basically am doing on my general site is just giving them all the announcements. I know in Canvas, we normally give out a weekly announcement to our students saying what's going on. And I just put that general statement out there. This is something that the students can come back to me and reply back to me whenever they want, um, but uh, they don't have to. And I'll be honest with you, normally I don't see a lot of students writing there on Teams where I see most of my students having a lot of interaction is actually up here in chat. And I'm gonna go into chat. And uh, this is just one student uh, daily, kind of, this has happened yesterday. I had another student here. These are all students that are interacting with me every day, okay? Getting information, sort of working out problems. And one of the most fantastic things about it is this thing up here on the top, which is a video call. I click on that button and immediately I am in a video call with my students. If they're having any kind of technical problems, we're looking at their screen, we're going over what's going on and things like that. All right, so that's one of the big ways that I use Teams almost on a daily basis. All right, but this is then going back. Um, 
we have meetings. Whoops, let me go back here to my team. All right, we have meetings. I don't know if you can see this down here. I have my day, uh, we're all uh, working remote. So I set up the meeting right here in Teams and say we're gonna have a meeting and suddenly this is gonna take me into a meeting. The thing that is just so amazing about Teams is the connection with Outlook, okay? It is incredibly easy to create a team because all of my students are already in Outlook and all I do is just sort of drag and drop and they suddenly become part of my team, all right? And so it's very easy. I have access in Teams because we are connected with Outlook to everybody that's in this class, everybody that's in the school, all right? So any student is going to have access to Teams, all right? And I can have chats with them and things like that. So. Um, that's really where I sort of see teams. I know one of the other things that uh, was being brought up, with, Car Carlton was bringing up, is the whole thing on teams and the teams meetings. And that certainly is very exciting. And I use it extensively, but there is a lot of things just having that basic communication. Um, and I find a, a better way to communicate with my students even than Canvas, all right? You're having chat messages with them all the time. And it is asynchronous. You are going out there and sending them a message and they're gonna get back to you when they can. And then you know, then you break into conversations and you go from there. And I don't wanna take up a lot of time, but that's sort of what this starts looking like, all right? There's a lot of other things you can go on to, um, but that's really the other interesting thing. And I'm gonna leave it at that for the moment. Okay, Charlotte. Hi, hi, hi Alan and, and Carlton. Um, uh, but there is an issue, uh, I guess my question is, it looks as if, uh, Carlton, you had a slide on, well, first of all, thank you, Alan, for sharing that. That was very helpful. And, and, but second, um, I noticed you had a slide on, it looks like there's an LTI for Teams in Canvas. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, so I believe because of authentication issues, we would need to work within teams within the Canvas environment. Um, uh, I thought that that was a requirement be, uh, do, uh, for, for Title V or, or rather OER distance learning practices is the, the issue of authentication. So I didn't know we could use it. Out, uh, you can use it outside of it, but it has to emanate or start from Canvas. Is, that's my understanding. Um, I am not a legal authority, okay? I do not know exactly how all that works. Uh, I know that this is available. Uh, we have certainly been looking at it and working with it at Saddleback. Um, we do know very much about what you're talking about with the connection with Canvas. And certainly, um, if I wanted to walk the whole way back out and start from Canvas and come into here, I could. All right, it's just a, seems to me to be an extra step. And so I'm going right into camp, I'm going right oh, in. Oh, I, I'm not, yeah. And I'm just trying to figure out of how I would use this and, and what would be the best way to do this. And that's, okay. all, that's all, so. Okay. Uh, but, thank, um, but thank you. Yeah, the, the point from my perspective is um, you certainly can go through Canvas, okay? It is all got all that set up and things like that, but it is also, you don't have to go through Canvas. Okay, unless there's, uh, unless you're going to get into a legal discussion on it. And I'm not, I, I'm not a legal scholar. I don't know about that. Yeah, I, I, I will definitely thank you yeah. <laughs> for that yeah. question. And also thank you, Alan, for that feedback in your particular scenario. Because I think it's really helpful for others to learn from um, people within this group on how they have deployed uh, this scenario for their own uh, campus. What I would like to add, I guess, to your question, um, Teams, if, you, if you're looking at what Alan is sharing, there's that plus sign, what we call a tab in Teams, that allows for either um, other applications within Office 365 or you know, what we would call third-party ap applications, but a, a Canvas or other LMSs to be part of a Teams channel as well. Uh, we could definitely, um, uh, I would love to learn your specific scenario. So if you, if you have availability, we could definitely talk about that offline, um, about uh, incorporating things like campus or other investments that you have existing into your particular team's channel or team site through the tabs feature. 
There may be um, other things from a configuration standpoint or from a policy standpoint that your that your scenario um, may be a little bit unique. But at least making sure that um, we kind of go over how that uh, third party integration, not just from a Teams to a Canvas or uh, but other entities into Teams works and is facilitated. We get the same type of question when it comes to like, hey, we're a Google Shop. You know, all this Teams conversation is great. But if I if my students had Google Calendar, you know, is that something that'd be able to incorporate? Because Alan was mentioning how it's it, it's a perfect scenario, especially if you're already using Outlook. But things like Google Calendar, for example, you, you can incorporate in Teams as well. So I definitely, if you have the if um uh, if Charlotte and Steve uh, were able to provide my contact information, or I could just put it in the chat, um, I'd love to hear from you directly or anyone on um, um on the meeting directly about their particular scenario and how we'd be able to incorporate uh, Microsoft Teams with your existing Well, I'd like to follow up uh, with Alan uh, on a question of the investment that was required to make this happen. Uh, you know, we have strong workforce money out there and everything, and, and, and I'm not sure if this kind of thing applies to it. Can you give us some idea of the history behind the investment that your college has made so that you get to this point? Steve, you're asking me a question. Unfortunately, I do not know. All right, let me give you my background on this. Basically, I've been at Saddleback two years. All right, this was really there before I got there and nobody knew it, okay? Nobody was using it. Um, so I wish I knew more where it came from, who funded it and how this is all done. But I walked in one day and saw this and said, whoa. <laughs> So, the, so, hidden, the hidden resources of the community college system strikes again. Yeah. <laughs> so as we know, Teams is embedded into 365. There um, are probably many colleges that don't see it because it hasn't been released to the general public. Um, and if you don't know about it, you, you can't really, you know, they, you don't ask. When you start asking, it's usually the IT teams that are very, very um, careful and slow on executing new, new platforms or apps. So if you, um, I would reach out to them and see if you could get some insight. If you don't see it, if it might be turned off um, or they may only give you limited capabilities and you need to ask for more and work with them on that. But I definitely agree with the premise that if the students use it in their classroom environment, they're going to be ready to use it in the business environment. And uh, it's probably the best way to learn it. Anybody else have experiences uh, in your classroom or, or uh, with Microsoft Teams right now, you'd like to share with the group? No, but I'd like to add that I'm actually interested in learning about Teams myself because I have heard from industry that some companies are using Teams. So to prepare my students, I'd like to learn about Teams so that I could get them knowing about Teams. And I wonder if there's a certification for Microsoft Teams and I'm creating a MOSS certification uh, independent study course at my college. And I would like to know if that might be uh, like teams might be one of the options to get them certified in. That's kind of a lot of questions all at once, but that's so, why I came on the call because I actually don't know about teams myself. So Yes, so in the chat, I put in uh, learn at Microsoft.com. That's a portable available to educators and students. I highly recommend you go and peruse it, sign up. It's a way for you to validate um, before you take a certification test. It's a way to dive deeper and learn into multiple platforms. It goes into AI, it goes into SharePoint. Um, basically, it's just, I, I'll call it a, a mini LinkedIn learning. Um, and that, that will help you. Um, in addition, just so you know, I also put in another um, link to opportunity.linkedin.com. That is, that is Microsoft opening up LinkedIn learning for those who cannot access it. I know some, some school districts or community colleges offer it, but it gives both students and faculty a way to um, get validation with a digital badge to um, expand their knowledge and put it on their you know, your resume or your living resume, which would be LinkedIn. Those are some great tools that are available to you. Oh, and then I also put in um, a link um, that'll 
show you where you can get discounted Microsoft certifications. So I believe like the AZ900 for um, Microsoft Azure is $15, which is a huge discount. And I also emailed you, Charlotte, just to you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> These are just some great things that, um, you know, Microsoft's doing, but um, AWS is doing the same. CompT is doing a lot of great things. So we have a lot of great webinars coming forward that will expose you to a lot of freebies as money's getting tighter and tighter um, and just help you expand your knowledge and your students' knowledge. So Charlotte, really quick, how do we get on that mailing list so we know about those things? Because my um, dean actually forwarded me the link to this meeting and I was kind of surprised. Julie, what, where are you? What campus? Uh, San Diego. I'm at uh, San Diego Miramar College. Oh, okay. Beautiful yeah. area. Yeah. Uh, I, I will send you links and then also your, um, send you connect, a connection to your regional director. So my peer in San Diego, who can, who can help you. Good. Yeah. Well, I already emailed you, so you can just forward me on to the, to the right person. You know, we all help each other. Um, so I'll just make sure I include Dwayne. Reinhardt, I don't have his email available to me, but if you do, um, Nicole, could you put it in there for her? Or you've emailed me so we can keep in touch. Okay, sounds good. Thanks. Well, there's a lot to learn. Um, you can only resist Microsoft so long before you have to get in. <laughs> I remember when I worked uh, for uh, Verizon, everything was Microsoft. I mean, 70,000 employees. And so everything you, you did was following that, that particular pattern. And then when I left uh, uh, Verizon and uh, started working with the community college system, everybody's talking about all these other things like Google and, and stuff like that. And, and the, but I keep coming back to well, what's the labor market information tell me? about what the students need to learn. Well, they're gonna go work in business. And yeah, a lot of people are switching to Google and these other platforms for stuff, but Microsoft's still the coin of the realm. Uh, that's what people need to know. I mean, whole, you wanna work for, uh, my wife works for Volvo Car Financial Services and they're all on Microsoft Teams. I mean, it's just, that's how you get, you make money is working with people in companies and well, whatever they're on, you need to know how to do it. And so I, I think uh, today's students have a lot of choices. And uh, our, our, our role is to help guide them. And I think we'd be doing them a disservice if we didn't let them know how important these things are in business. Because the college environment is very often different. And uh, we get used to certain things and, and our faculty get used to certain things. But out in business, it's, uh, it's pretty straightforward. <laughs> and I don't know if you have anything to add to that, uh, Charlotte or Carlton, but uh, it's just what I've seen. Can you I'll add something real quick? This is Mike. I'm at Foothill. Uh, Teams is part of my Office 365 deployment on the web. So I just, I'm in it now and it seems to be working. Excellent. Yeah, Mike's one of our more IT type people. Mike, what was your take on today's uh, presentation? Is this something that's relevant to you and your campus? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we're using Zoom. Uh, we're using WebEx. All oh, it's I would, I'd love to find one product that we could all, that we could live with. I really would. And the integration with Canvas sounds very attractive. Mm -hmm. well, Mike, let us know if we can support you in um, exploring that connection working through Canvas and or any training you might need. Thank you. All right. Well, I, I think this has been an exciting uh, uh, event. It's certainly very sobering for a lot of us. Uh, uh, any other questions? We'd be glad to take them right now. Otherwise, we're going to head towards wrapping it up and thanking our, our speaker. Well, uh, if I can just jump in there for one minute, I think it's sort of interesting to realize that when you're in Teams, if you happen to have a file, a Word document, okay, you're going to open up that Word document in Teams, and it's going to take you right into Word. The integration that is part of Teams with everything else that we teach really, I think, is an essential part. Uh, for the most part, I'm teaching Excel, and I'm able to have all my Excel files sitting there in Teams and going right into Excel and looking at Teams as a hub for your workforce is really one of the major motivators for me and why I want my students to know it. 
Uh, they're not going to just know Excel and Word and PowerPoint in the future. They're going to be going through Teams and then going out to these different applications. I think I couldn't have said it any better than that, Alan. I, that's the major component of what Teams, how Teams is different than everything else. So whether it's from an office standpoint, if you're just if you're working in PowerPoint, if you're working in um, Word and Excel, you're working in Teams. If you're working in SharePoint, you're having your students learn document storage in the back end. They're learning in Teams. If you have a student that's just really interested in cybersecurity and IT security and identity management and access management um, and, pri and um, uh, privileged access management, they're learning Teams. All of those components that we incorporate from a Microsoft perspective all is all embedded with Teams as well. So it's more than chat, it's more than meetings, it's all of those components from a technology standpoint that you use every day uh, for your classrooms that you and your students use every day in their own personal lives. Well, thank you, Carlton, and thanks for uh, wrapping it up. And Alan, uh, you've been a, a, a little ray of sunshine today. Uh, oh, thanks. Sharing your insight with us. And, and uh, it was nothing like seeing how, how it actually works in, in places. And Charlotte, thank you for bringing Carlton. And I uh, hope you all will join us again next week. We have the uh, Google IT certification stack uh, that we're going to be talking about and, and their employer engagement. They should be very interesting. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks. Thanks, Carlton. Thanks, Carlton.